122 years, immigrants made DuPont gunpowder in the gunpowder mills along the Brandywine Creek, 25 miles south of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, near the port city of Wilmington, Delaware. The founders of these mills were the DuPont family, refugees of the French Revolution who risked everything to come here rather than face the sharp blades of the guillotines. Once the DuPonts constructed a home and factory, they hired other new arrivals, refugees from Ireland's United Irish Rebellion, who landed here after fleeing war, starvation, religious persecution, and widespread corruption. Then, decades later, the Great Famine of Ireland forced a mass migration, and it became common for these families to shelter their relatives as they came off the ships. We refer to this now as chain migration. Italians came next, and before long, 12 nations were represented in the employ of DuPont's gunpowder mills. Generation after generation of all these diverse cultures cooperated in sweat and danger to build the empire we now know today as the DuPont Company. In the heart of the Brandywine Valley lies an historic area with abundant natural resources of rivers and forests that nurtured a colonial era gunpowder factory. It was energized by water wheel and its products transported by Conestoga wagon. The workers were recent immigrants from Europe and they ran the country stores. They manufactured gunpowder in granite mills built with their own hands and they raised livestock for the upper class. While remaining passionate about their own cultures, this community worked together to build a powerhouse corporation. Many descendants of this forgotten village strive to present the story of these people and the young corporation. will present culture shock and drama during the European migration of refugee families into the DuPont dynasty during early America. From origins in the French Revolution and the Irish Rebellion sprang parallel stories of Irish and French immigration into the original American colonies where the immigrants settled in the Brandywine Valley. Beginning in 1802, the story follows the immigrants settling in and working for an enterprising French family upriver of Wilmington, Delaware. Immigration is an essential part of the DuPont story. The DuPont family themselves were immigrants from France who came to the United States in 1800, in part to escape the turmoil after the French Revolution, but mostly to seek business opportunities in the United States. Most of their initial workforce were themselves immigrants from France and other places in Europe who lived in and around Wilmington, Delaware and on the Brandywine River. Later, the DuPont Company relied heavily on workers from Ireland who they brought over through transport agents out of Philadelphia. Most of the folks coming through Liverpool and places like that but a majority of the powder yard workers ended up being Irish. Later, Italians came into the powder yards beginning in the 1860s, 1870s, and they themselves became a main part of the powder yard force. Still new to the rules of American society, the Irish immigrants supported DuPont corporate ambitions to manufacture gunpowder because everyone benefited from the revenue. These new arrivals toiled and flourished in the shadow of the enormously influential DuPont family and their powerful manufactory. As the United States was embroiled in the Civil War, this gunpowder community was primarily Irish due to the diaspora caused by the Irish famine and Ireland's ongoing troubles. Before long, a few Italian men began to arrive. And later, when wooden ships evolved into steamships, the journey across the Atlantic became safer, faster, and easier. 
Soon, many Italians and other Europeans were emigrating to the gunpowder mill community. And by 1895, a dozen countries were represented in the DuPont mills. In this Brandywine Valley community, the DuPont families and the expanding gunpowder worker community lived and toiled side by side with courage, enterprise, and tenacity. Surprisingly, everyone got along well with only minor conflicts in the local taverns. Powderman is a story that spans many generations with ties to our own American Revolution. It reveals stories and anecdotes of ancestors, which were written down in diaries and journals and shared with us for this story. The historical drama, the rich folklore and music provide a fascinating glimpse into this community, which disappeared after the mills closed in 1921. For example, this story begins in Paris. A French nobleman named Pierre Samuel Dupont fled revolutionary France for America with his family and evaded a date with the guillotine because he was a French bureaucrat in the court of King Louis XVI. Fortunately, Dupont was also a very good friend of Thomas Jefferson, and the two collaborated on many things. Dupont's son, E.I. Dupont, was a student of French scientist Antoine Lavoisier, the gunpowder genius of France. His other son, Victor, was a French emissary stationed in South Carolina. As the French Revolution was playing out and heads were rolling, Pierre S. Dupont feared for the welfare of his family. The family boarded a ship called the American Eagle, and in the stealth of night, the entourage left France quietly and sailed for America. With few belongings on the dangerous Atlantic crossing, the family braved the freezing winter journey, maintaining their ambition and entrepreneurial spirit. Once in America, the family bought land along the Brandywine Creek and started the gunpowder factory 25 miles south of Philadelphia, near the port city of Wilmington, Delaware. They immediately faced harsh wilderness conditions and political powers who wanted to close the gunpowder mills by enacting new laws against these mysterious French immigrants. 200 years later, this family's empire is known as a major influence in business, commerce, and politics. What has gone unnoticed is the fact that the DuPonts helped chart the course of the United States throughout our entire American history, starting with the friendship of Thomas Jefferson in 1775. The DuPonts are a true corporate dynasty, unrivaled in their influence, wealth, longevity, and patriotism towards America. Archives and family correspondence authenticate the fact that in 1803, Pierre S. DuPont was directly responsible in assisting President Thomas Jefferson in negotiating the Louisiana Purchase, which doubled the size of American colonies and greatly expanded commercial trade and federal tax revenues. His grandson, Samuel Francis DuPont, apprenticed at sea at the young age of 14, was an accomplished sea captain before age 18, and eventually became an admiral. Samuel Francis DuPont was credited with the first naval victory in the Civil War by winning the Battle of Port Royal, thereby establishing a Union occupation in the Confederate harbor. For this feat, he was awarded congressional honors. And in Washington, D.C., DuPont Circle is named for him. From 1803 to 1921, the DuPont sponsored scores of immigrants by paying for the voyage of those who arrived from Ireland and Italy in search of a better life. New arrivals were delivered to the Mill Valley safely after the long, dangerous trip and given jobs, housing, schooling, and bank accounts. Ironically, it was typical for war and civil turmoil to rage in their homelands of Ireland and France, while they found secure living and abundant work manufacturing DuPont explosives. It was extremely dangerous work, but provided a relatively comfortable, sustainable life for generations of immigrant families who proliferated. Several of these Irish and Italian families became wealthy and powerful as well. From Ireland, the Kellehers, Darties, Gallaghers, Walshes, and Mathewsons lived and prospered in this mill valley where they worked in the mansion estates as domestics and as powdermen in the gunpowder mills. Paul Kelleher sailed to America from Ireland and raised five children at Hagley while making DuPont gunpowder. He was welcomed to Philadelphia, exhausted but with great anticipation, to signs of no Irish need apply. Indeed, 
religious persecution and bigotry against Irish Catholics was openly demonstrated. However, once any immigrant reached the DuPont mills, they were treated very well. Still, life in the mill worker community had many dangers. And sadly for Paul Kelleher, in 1875, the flu epidemic killed his five children. Years later, Paul Kelleher also died after an explosion when gunpowder was ignited by a distracted worker, killing 15 men. The force of the blast sent debris and bodies across the river. Adding to the horror, this village could only resort to asking survivors of the deceased mill workers to collect the remains of their loved ones with their family pushcarts. The only lingering mention of these sad events are inscribed on tombstones in the old St. Joseph's on the Brandywine Irish Catholic Cemetery, located just outside of the gates of the powder yards. The danger was real and always a threat. However, the advantages of the job and its homestead benefits were too accommodating to the desperate immigrants in a strange new land. So they stayed and they prospered, as did their French sponsor family, the DuPonts. This small but prosperous town grew around the gunpowder factory with its taverns, general stores, and housing for the workers. Homeland cultures like traditional music and religious festivities were always present. And soon, the Irish welcomed other nationalities arriving to work in the mills. In 1883, Carlos Sico traveled by wooden ship from Italy to America, and upon arrival, a cousin, Sam Ferrero, gained him a job in the Hagley Upper Yards and introduced him to his future wife, Maria, the daughter of Giacomo Persolio, another Italian immigrant at Walker's Bank. After years of working in the mills, Carlos was elevated to foreman. This Italian immigrant loved his job and his new country. Unfortunately, his employment would end on January 5, 1917. Now 58, Carlos would routinely complain about the younger mill hands. Apparently, he would find screws and nails in the gunpowder being readied for the grinding mill, which obviously presented danger. So it did, on a cold winter day, when the mill exploded, sending Carlos Sico across the river in pieces. The African-American struggle also had an amazing presence in the Brandywine Valley community. Harriet Tubman and abolitionist Thomas Garrett, her Quaker collaborator, smuggled slaves throughout the area, evading local slave hunters. While Delaware was a slave state, the DuPont Company and their powdermen were supporters of these two legends of abolition as they outmaneuvered local plantation owners. Lincoln's term as president saw a convergence of cultures arriving to the United States, and the DuPont yards began to diversify as well. DuPont's mill workers lived in harmony and cooperation, while draft rides were being antagonized in nearby Philadelphia. Undaunted by the ever-present danger, the estate families and mill workers would share in the drama surrounding the wealthy boss and his estate and the danger at the mills. In 122 years, this immigrant workforce participated and observed every historic event that the United States engaged in until the mills were closed. American society and their leaders provided these immigrant mill workers a nurturing community to grow and prosper. This story shows what can happen when resources and attitudes allow lawful people to assimilate into communities. This historic immigrant community was esteemed in courage, committed to freedom, and exhibited unwavering patriotism by exercising deep love for this experiment called America. Powderman is a story of all of us, as we are all immigrants. It's also a story for the ages. The themes of prejudice and proliferation transcend race, religion, and culture, while cultivating cooperation and goodwill towards each other. The Powderman as a TV series would have the feel of Downton Abbey for its rich gentrification and gangs of New York for its grit of immigration. This was an immigrant community that served an American corporate dynasty and helped the good guys win during critical events in American history. I could change my name